Welcome back. As we promised, we are going to cover the Medical Tourism Conference and Exhibition. This uh, very important event, which was inaugurated recently by Prime Minister Dr. Mustafa Madbouli and was held under the auspices of President Abdel Fattah Sisi with the presence of uh, the Presidential Advisor for Health Affairs, Dr. Mohammed Awad Tagdeen and the Governor of South Sinai, uh, Khalid Fouda, in addition to a number of uh, top executives, academics and media figures. To shed more light on the event, and on the potentials we have in this regard, we are very much delighted to have with us via phone Dr. Islam Anan, Professor of Health Policy and Health Economics. Thank you very much for being with us, sir, and a very good morning. It's my pleasure. Good morning to you and all your audience. Uh, thank you, sir. Sir, let's start immediately with the, the importance of holding such a conference um, today. I mean, the timing of the conference, particularly under the slogan or the title of Medical Tourism Components, meaning that we are um, starting to um, build the future of this sector on scientific studies, on scientific rules, according to the big potentials we have in this regard. If you please elaborate. That's very true and a very comprehensive introduction. Thank you for that. So. Uh, the timing is very important because currently we are promoting our uh, Egyptian vision for health for 2030, which is mainly uh, focusing on the citizen health and providing health to all citizens and not only treating patients. And having this vision, it actually diversifies into a lot of uh, sub-visions, which one of them, and a very particular one, is to promote medical tourism because uh, if we are looking at uh, foreign currency availability, medical tourism was one of the big assets of a lot of countries of generating uh, profits in foreign currencies. We're talking countries like in Asia Pacific, like Thailand, for example, a lot of uh, uh, countries in Europe, uh, countries in Asia like Turkey. So uh, having this uh, speciality, especially that we are in Egypt, we do have all what it takes to promote it as medical tourism. Of course, we still... Uh, building a lot of infrastructure, but so far, even without uh, the, uh, yeah, the the focus in the infrastructure of medical tourism in particular, we are receiving thousands of thousands of patients to be treated in Egypt. Mm -hmm. uh, for, for example, the medical tourism, it needs an infrastructure from a Italian perspective, and that's what actually the government is actually focusing on, and it was really enforced during the two days of the conference, as well as uh, to set certain disease areas where Egypt can actually highlight a speciality in it, like, for example, we are receiving thousands of patients to be treated annually from hepatitis C because we do have uh, a massive experience in treatment and in medications, especially that the medications are much, much cheaper. We're talking like 10 uh, percent out of the initial cost in UK, for example. So having this uh, conference and this timing, it sends a very good message that the economy is actually, we are back on track. Uh, we are setting a lot of infrastructure. There's a lot of roadmaps were set during the conference of two days that will enable us to reach the vision of 2030 and have it in a smooth transition for the citizen health as well as medical tourism. And a lot to be discussed actually, Dr. Islam, because, you know, when uh, medical tourism was mentioned before, you are going to find us as Egyptians speaking only about the hot sand in Siwa, for example, the uh, uh, sulfuric wells in Helwan, stuff like that. But to talk about uh, medical tourism hubs, medical tourism cities, and for example, one of the statements which were released by uh, Dr. Muhammad Awad Tagadeen, Presidential Advisor for Health Affairs, said that South Sinai in specific can be the uh, medical tourism capital of Egypt. How do you see this as we are talking about cities scattered all over Egypt, which can be a source of national income and in the same time to be a start of course, in a long journey. Yeah, the selection is very important. And as uh, Professor Dr. Muhammad al tagadeen mentioned, uh, having a touristic city, so cities were mentioned like Sharm el-Sheikh, Hergada, Sfega, Kusir, especially the cities on the Red Sea, were mentioned because they do have already the infrastructure of the Atelarian uh, services. And uh, we need to focus on these cities and not only for uh, like Siwa, as you mentioned, or the cities in the desert for uh, tropical healing and so on, but uh, to promote because uh, we need a huge and massive marketing plan. And since the touristic cities, they do already have their fans in Europe, in Asia, 
and already the marketing plan is there, it will be easy to build on it, to piggyback the touristic marketing on top of the touristic, uh, sorry, the medical uh, target on top of the touristic one. And in, uh, in order to do that as well, you need that uh, the patient himself is coming or herself coming to Egypt to relax, find a one week or two of relaxation, do his, for, the, for example, surgery, dental surgery, uh, treatment, and then go back to his country with a good experience, not about healing, but about the touristic places he yeah. went as well, the hospitality he actually uh, been treated with. And most important is it would be in a cost that would be much, much, much less if he got his treatment in his own country and with a better quality as well. So combining uh, the comfort and authenticity of Egypt and the lifestyle with the medical treatment, which will be cost effective for them, it will be one of the best global destinations. Egypt will be one of the best global destinations for tourism and for medical tourism, inshallah. Inshallah. Let me put uh, what you have said in, uh, in, in more simple words or to summarize the whole story, to combine together what we call medical tourism and wellness tourism. True? That's true, yes. So we, we do have two things. The yeah. wellness, it means the human wellness, all the general health of uh, the citizen, not yeah. a patient. And we are talking mainly about quality of life. Mm. So enhancing quality of life, it got a lot of aspects. One of them is psychological aspects, for example. So uh, if you go to a place to practice meditation, for example, and we do have a lot of destinations that we can practice meditation in the desert, by the sea. And one of the other factors are having a relaxation that will enhance motor functions of the body. That's one of the quality of life. Yeah. And another one is for social. So we do have three main aspects for the quality of life. That's yeah. awareness. But if we're talking about medical and health, we are talking about a disease itself or a syndrome. But I cannot we... separate them from each other. I mean, I cannot separate, um, for example, mediation in the wide de desert than having uh, a surgery in, in, in one of our uh, big hospitals. But um, I can say that uh, under yes, this yes. very wide umbrella... in definition, but uh, of course, any disease or any syndrome, mm. it affects wellness. Yep. So uh, we measure the disease by two things. One of them is the quality of life and the yep. wellness. So in, in general, if you would like any person going through a surgery, we need to make sure that he's in a good wellness or a good quality of life pre-surgery and post-surgery. And the best thing to do uh, is to be in a place where he can actually relax. Enjoy, Recovery and uh, rehabilitation and the psychological things. aspect, the psychological side of the coin is very important. But sir, this is I want to see the opportunity because I have an expert with me via phone to speak and in, in much detail about how we are um, uh, forming this very comprehensive strategy uh, in, in this very, uh, let's say, um, very vital uh, sector of tourism. Um, here, I'm not only speaking about the wonderful Red Sea resorts or, or as I said, the White Desert or Siwa as examples, but to say that in the Saf, in El Giza, we are going to have the first medical uh, tourism hub. Uh, this is something to say that it's a, a comprehensive strategy, as I said, and the cities qualified to, impl to, uh, to enjoy or to witness this strategy are scattered all over Egypt and not located in certain areas. That's correct. And if you are talking about the plan in detail or in more depth, we need an internal plan, an external plan. And mm -hmm. that was actually the two plans tackled through the two days in the conference. The internal plan, it was discussed in many panels during the conference, especially from the Egyptian Health Authority and the representative of Minister of Health and the Prime Minister, is we need to make sure that we are building a good infrastructure that will be um, uh, matching the standards of health uh, worldwide. We need to have an hotelarian hospital. So we need to link between hotels and uh, hospitals. We need to designate certain hospitals for medical tourism and to make sure that we do have the humane resources equipped enough and trained enough to be dealing with foreigners. Of course, we're not talking only about language, but we are talking about also hospitality and the level of treatment that they are receiving uh, elsewhere at their uh, home countries, we need to make sure that they do have an easy process. So the process starts when the, actually the tourist, and I would like to name it tourist, not patient, 
entered the airport. From that moment, he should be actually uh, accompanied till he receives the medical treatment, uh, staying in the hotel itself, till he returns back. So the internal plan is very important. Mm -hmm. And one of the uh, internal plans are actually among the designated hospitals or the designated disease areas that we will be uh, treating, as I was mentioning. Uh, another one is to make sure that we do have uh, a good uh, supply and a strategic supply from the medications, surgical supplies, and so on, to make sure that we do ha don't have any disruption in the supply chain in the future. Mm -hmm. so and the studying the market, too. if I can call medical tourism, it has its own market different from any other uh, tourism uh, segment. This is also another important issue regarding um, the nationalities who are going to receive regarding the um, the seasons we have because um, if, if there are seasons uh, for um, a medical tourism when and, and, and how uh, we are going to be able to receive the numbers the expected numbers to study the market I think it's also one of the important elements if you agree with me on that yes uh, and actually uh, thank you for that because this is the external plan so which countries we should be targeting, and uh, if so, which nationalities, and uh, even age and uh, socioeconomic class among the country. So, so a comprehensive integrated marketing plan, a full one. We need that everyone in the world, as they are currently hearing about Turkey and Thailand and a lot of countries working in that, we need them to say, yes, if you'd like a dental treatment, for example, just go to Egypt. And uh, that's why uh, during the conference, uh, uh, Dr. Fouda, the uh, governor, mentioned that uh, if so, by 2027, we'll be generating up to $270 billion mm -hmm. from the medical tourism. This is mainly from marketing. This is if we can market it right, the internal plan and the external plan. And um, as well, we need to combine that with the presidential initiatives because we do have a very good experience with presidential initiatives and treatments. We can, uh, for example, integrate it with the waiting list, the presidential initiative and waiting list. Mm. Uh, and we do have as well experience with the African countries. So these, these are one of uh, the target countries because uh, we launched it with the presidential initiative another one for to treat hepatitis C for one uh, million Africans. This was citizens. my coming question, sir, because um, I, I, I don't know if this is a little bit far from uh, the, the topic we are discussing or no. Um, our success, it's such a success story that we eliminated virus C, hepatitis C from Egypt, and we also offered uh, treatment for our uh, African brothers, whether they're in their own um, um, countries or, e or here in Egypt, in addition to One Million Health Initiative and um, the international organizations loading and hailing our success in this regard. Do you think that this also is a kind of, what ca um, can we call it, propaganda or such marketing for our medical tourism, or this is something different? Uh, and thank you for that. It's really linked to the topic. We, we can talk about both. We are uh, young in integration. Uh, the presidential initiative have put Egypt in the health map worldwide. So we received, for example, uh, the gold uh, standard from the WHO in eliminating virus C. Mm -hmm. And we are the first country to receive it worldwide. And it has put Egypt among the public health and primary health prevention countries. We are doing screening and early prevention among uh, all the Egyptians and One Million uh, Healthy Lives Initiative mm -hmm. has achieved more than 102 million visits among all the presidential initiatives. So it's one of the top screening programs worldwide. So all of these are actually marketing materials. Uh, and if that's what we are talking marketing. And if we're talking experience, we do have now a good experience in early detection, in uh, waiting list elimination, in treating uh, foreigners and our neighbors in Africa. So all these combined will help in putting Egypt and recognize Egypt that if we are marked in Egypt as one of the destinations for medical tourism, we do have the base of that. We do have the experience and we do have the uh, international recognition from the international organizations saying that Egypt is achieving massive leaps in healthcare than before. Well, sir, um, 
in fact, I do have many other questions and um, other topics to um, to be raised in this regard, but unfortunately we're running out of time. I really enjoyed our discussion. We were very much delighted to have with us via phone Dr. Islam Anan, Professor of Health Policy and Health Economics. Thank you very much for your input, sir, and have a very good day. Right after the short break, we are going to return back with more, so stay tuned.